Hi, I'm Art, your host of Cigar Time, and welcome back to our Tuesday night show all about cigars. And let me introduce our esteemed panel. To my right, we have Rob. Hi, everybody. How you doing? To his right, we have Paul. Howdy. <laughs> Can't top that. To his <laughs> right, we have Scott. Hi, everybody. How you doing? All right, this is one up. <laughs> I can't wait, I can't wait to hear what comes out of Tia's mouth. Hi. <laughs> well put. Less is more. Why did I know that was coming? Oh, man. And we also have our two lovely cigar babes with us this evening, uh, the lovely Teresa and the lovely Miss Caroline, who will be serving up our cigars and cutting them for most of us. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. You know just how I like it, well, girl. Thank you. She knows how I like it, uncut. I know how you like oh, it, too. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> you like it uncut? Yeah, uncut. Okay. Wow. Uncut. Use Not your imagination. That. Are you cutting, are you cleaning that Thank with alcohol you, after you use this it? This is mine. Oh, Yes, my I personal. See. I If see. I can do whatever Thank I want. Much. Okay. Again. I like the soft flame, slow. Well, thank you very much. Don't forget our why mystery so smoker. Are so big. Like, why don't yeah. they make them take a little care smaller? Of me. Like, well, they do. They don't. No, that's not in this one, it. right? No, this one's very, very Yeah, like large lately, a lot of the cigars coming make, out are really big. Well, Oh, God. Bigger is better. Bigger is better. It is. It really is. You should check and out getting, the 80 ring. They're getting thicker, too. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm stuck. <laughs> Some of them aren't that long, but they're getting thicker. They Girth, are getting girth thicker. Girth is good. Girth is good. I wonder why okay. they're doing that. I don't like it. Seriously, I don't like it. I don't really like the thicker cigar. Well, I don't yeah. think we were asking either. your opinion. No, I'm sorry. We were oh. talking from, from a woman's perspective. She's no, like, never mind. Let's oh, not go I'm there. Where are you going? I think it's time for Miss Tia to introduce our cigar tonight. Okay, our first, well, our only cigar is going to be the St. Louis Ray SLR Generation 2. Actually, a fun fact about that, um, they got the name because they said for all the knowledge they passed down through generation, generation. So I guess it's the second generation making this cigar. So the wrapper is an Ecuadorian Sumatra, the binder is Nicaraguan, and the filler is Nicaraguan. And Honduran, can't forget Honduran. The sizes are Robusto, Toro, and Titan. And the taste profile, I think we are different on this one, but it's bold notes of leather and dried fruit. Also hints of earth, caramel, and chocolate. Caramel like me. Sounds good at least. Sounds like a, a candy store. It does. <laughs> it it like, smokes I might also <laughs> add, another name for Titan is Gordo. Gordo, I know, my I favorite. I figured you would like that. Thank uh, you. Uh, Our I, first think I, topic. I feel like Gordo better though. I, I don't know. know why. Just, Our first topic this <laughs> evening is why age a cigar and what's the best way to age a cigar i think i'll let uh i think i'll let rob take wow. it wow. Wow. wow really tired of carrying wow, you show. need tired of carrying the show you, right. you, 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 need, you need some star time yeah, no i don't for those of you who are rob's friends this is the appropriate time to get on them yeah thank you for that take it away um, the, the reason to age a cigar is to let all the the tobaccos marry with each other to get the best possible taste from a cigar. Um, that's basically why I would age a cigar. Uh, also, the, over time, the oils start to rise to the surface of the cigar. You get right. the they get into the, yeah, that's where you get the, the, plume. the plume. I think we have talked right. about that. But yeah. and, you, know, the, you get most of the flavors from the cigar from the wrapper. So the oils in the cigar will go to the wrapper. And that's Doesn't where the, the wrapper change when you age? Doesn't it change well, a little bit in it, color? It all changes. And one of the things that people don't think about, and this is a lot like aging wine, mm -hmm. oxygen right. interacts mm -hmm. with all of the chemicals that occur naturally in a mm -hmm. cigar. So over time, as oxygen mixes with some of those chemicals, the flavors mm -hmm. open up and bloom. Yeah. Right. I think they smooth out too, because I think they're still, the, the wrapper's just a little bit wet, so it's it's, it's easy ammonia, to work it's, with. It's ammonia. Yeah, when first, and it, when you when roll. you wet it, it brings the, the tobacco back to life. So what happens is the tobacco starts to release a little bit of ammonia, and the longer you let it sit, the more ammonia gets released um, to a certain point, and then it just becomes a smoother it's cigar. Yeah. It's just like uh, just like wine. The older it gets, the better it gets. Absolutely. So, 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 so if I want to enjoy, on, on, if if want to enjoy a pepino, I should age it, huh? I must be at my peak then. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Because it never mild out the pepperness, right? That I don't like. Would that mild that, that flavor out? Yeah. If I age it, it? Yeah, absolutely. So the, if a the, person wants to age, they you know, take like, change the taste a little bit so it's not so strong, would you recommend aging it? Then? Aging yeah. mellows a cigar for sure. Yeah. Sadly, 
aging does not make a bad cigar yeah. better. That's yeah, still, that's right. It might make it a little better than it starts out, but it, it's not going to turn it into a great cigar. Right. right. Yeah. Now, what about how do you age a cigar besides let it sit there and don't let it dry out? Well, that's a key thing, not to let it dry out. Mm. Right. Yes. Because you need a really, really good humidor or really good storage facility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why in, in certain countries, especially like England, they have shops that are called laying down shops. And that's the term they use, laying down. I was going to ask about that, because you've talked about that, and I don't know that I completely understand what that, that is. What the, what they, they have couches. Yeah. And you, <laughs> and you, and you <laughs> lay down. Yeah, that, I, yeah. that I'm all yeah. about. <laughs> no, some, of, some of the large English tobacconists, of which some of them date back hundreds of years, have special rooms, which are you know, very expensively uh, heated, uh, heated, cooled, and as well as humidified. They, they have certain cycles where the temperature and the humidity go up and down just to give, you know, just a general, uh, just a general keeping of the flavors and keeping of the texture and keeping of all the things that go into a cigar. And over long periods of time, they typically keep them in the boxes. The laying down process usually involves keeping them stored in the boxes where they all meld together. And it is really the finest way. And most laying down shops won't even sell a uh, box or, or rent out space for your box unless you're going to keep it for five or 10 years. Yeah. Wow. So our, our, our uh, lockers, right, which are lockers well work climbing the same way. perfect. They're climate could, control. You know, our yep. members yep. could age them yep. in our store. Yeah, yeah. and one, exactly. of the things one of the things you should do is every once in a while, maybe once a year, take a, take a cigar out try it, jot down uh, some notes, and then a year later, take another one. You want to see how it develops. See how it develops and oh, see how it changes. I never and thought about that. Different, different cigars will age differently. Yeah. But would you um, do it with the same, not the same cigar, but the same brand cigar? No, or? the same, no, the side of the same box. Oh, I'll see. Yeah. Box. Now, what about turning the, I've heard turning the cigar, what does that do? For my money, the way I used to do it when I would come back from Cuba, <laughs> Legally. Nothing legally, 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 I might legally, add. Yeah. And I don't want to put any knock against our English tobacconist friends, but when I was able to bring back many boxes of, of cigars back when you could do that, you were allowed to do that, uh, I would age them in the boxes. I would leave them sealed in the boxes, mm -hmm. not, break, not break the seal, leave them sealed, and I'd put them in these oversized Tupperwares that would hold 15 or 20 boxes. And I would put, uh, I would put a brick of, of florist foam, the green florist foam, and I would keep pouring distilled water over it every mm -hmm. so often, and I would keep a, a, a hygrometer, so I could, an electronic hygrometer, I might add, so I could measure the temperature, and I would keep them, in a, I'd keep them usually in the playroom of my home, which was below grade, right. so it was a little cooler down there. And then once or twice a week, I would crack the box, let some oxygen in, because you have to, yeah. or you'll, sometimes you'll get the rainforest effect. Yeah. So you will get mold. Well, you will, you will get mold. You'll yeah. get mold yeah. or the, yeah. that yeah. little bit of extra ammonia, ammonia that you were right. talking That's about. Correct. Yeah. You have you're to vent that, that. Yeah. otherwise yeah. the cigars but, are just going to yeah. reabsorb but it. I used to crack it once or twice a week. Now, of course, there are better methods today. This is a while back. Uh, there's better methods than Flores foam in a large container, but that, that's another story. We'll save that for another day. But in the days when I was bringing back the Cubans, a lot of the years, the crops, for a lot of reasons, they weren't producing the finest cigars, but by aging them, as long as I did in most cases, they really brought out the peak flavors in them, and they were really then worth the money and worth, you know, all the time and travel to get them. I wasn't going to Cuba just for cigars. As a matter of fact, that was just an afterthought, actually. Well, maybe more than an afterthought. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd have a lot of relatives and friends with me who didn't smoke, so you could figure out how that worked. Yeah. And we were allowed to bring back, they allowed us to bring back four boxes of cigars, and I always brought back cabinets of 50 and a bottle of rum. That was usually what they allowed, and of course, unlimited books or manuscripts. But uh, that, that's how I did it. Hmm. Speaking uh, about aging Cuban cigars in particular, and this applies to some other cigars as well, but when you go about the process of aging, uh, stopping short is a huge mistake. There's actually a long period of time that they call the sick period. Yeah, it'll, it'll yep. be, yeah. when, a, when a cigar will taste absolutely horrendous, no matter what cigar it is, right. unless you age it past that point. Yeah, but it's Paul, still nowadays, offense. most of the major cigar manufacturers don't let them out of the factory. And Until they're, they're yeah, past uh, the sick they, period. Yeah, this isn't something you really have to worry about. If you buy uh, cigars fresh off a table, 
or if you go to certain places in Miami or Key West where they manufacture cigars and you buy them fresh from the roller stand, if you don't smoke them within a few days, then you've got to set them down for nine months to a year, yeah. or you will be what they call in the, in, in the trade the weeping stage, where the cigars will leach ammonia, not taste very good, and, and, and you'll feel like you've been robbed. But by laying those down, you know, you'll get a special treat. Some of those small manufacturers really make very tasty cigars. So, uh, do you, if you're specifically aging the cigar, do you recommend leaving it in the cellophane or taking it out? I like if it's If it's a cellophane cigar. Well, I tr always used to try to age them in, in sealed in, in a box. box. So whatever they came in, yeah. and of course, most Cubans didn't have cellophane on exactly. them. Exactly, right. Now, today, most American manufacturers you know, put cellophane on them to protect them in the humidors from people handling them mm -hmm. and everything yeah. else. And even though we like what we call nude cigars because we think they look the most beautiful. They look a lot you know, better. Yeah, they do look a lot better. But most manufacturers put cello on them. I personally would age them without the cello. If you're taking them out of the box and putting them into your humidor, I would take the cello off. That's just my own personal yeah. preference. Mm -hmm. I don't think the cello adds anything once they're in your possession and they're in your humidor. I don't think the cello adds a thing. How about the, the some people think if you have two cigars next to each other and they, they start to taste like each other. I, I find that not to be true. Maybe an acid no, next to something. No, well, yeah, that that was, yeah, that was cigars. Cigars, yeah. But they yeah. don't belong in your human door. Yeah, that's right. well, that's yeah. Well, I know, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. but it yeah. could change because, you know, I, yeah, I, I, it's so I, strong. I'm, look, I, I, I have a very dear friend of mine who has been with me many, many times to Cuba and, and he, he, and he buys the finest cigars down there. And, and you, as you all know, I have friends in the Cuban tobacco business down there who hand select the finest cigars. And he takes them, he takes them out of the, he takes them out of the box, puts them in his humidor, and he takes, he takes a glass of rum, a good rum I might have, but rum, and he lays it, he lays them in with the cigars. He's got like a hundred count humidor. Mm. Huh. And he ages them with the rum. You know, every time I see him do it, I want to shoot myself. But uh, yeah. He likes it. And again, cigar smoking is what you like. It's very yep, personal. That's all that it's matters. All yeah. It's like all personal. So don't, you know, no matter what's said, whether it be here or anywhere else, you do what you like. Except you do what gives you the most taste and the most enjoyment of a cigar. Just don't and light your cigar with a candle. No, don't no, light it with a candle exactly. or try not to light it with a Zippo. <laughs> because that's gas and it'll get, that taste yeah. will get into the cigar. That's true. Well, speaking of candles and everything, I think uh, we ought to talk about Christmas. It's this show, time? Christmas, yeah. It's only a few weeks ago before be Christmas. Hanukkah? Candles? Well, candles. What, don't don't, don't light it with a Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, you light like candles with Hanukkah. But they are Festivus, pretty candles. Yeah. yeah, for the rest of us. Forget about that. Festivus, yeah. Well, when I was a kid, they didn't have light bulbs. So they used on the Christmas trees like real candles. <laughs> well, I remember they were they dangerous. They didn't have well, you know, every other house burned oh, down. But so you must have been popular with the fire department. Yeah, yeah. Very popular. that Very popular. was the way it was done. My yeah, well, father. That? See, that I'm that that's, that? that's the mystery. Oh, that's our mystery. Smoker. That's our mystery, mystery man. Smoker. One day, was born one day early... we're going to have him on camera and we're going to see what he really looks like. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be afraid. I'm, I suspect he might wear a dress, although I don't know that. Uh, <laughs> what was he saying? My father, they, it's the way they put lights on their Christmas tree when he grew up. They were candles. <laughs> they, they, they had a clip that went on the tree, and if you've ever seen a candle that has like a metal flashing background, right, right. that went back against the tree. And then they put little candles in them that look similar to the candles yeah, off of you. a birthday cake, the slightly larger. I, like, I told you. Brave you knew man it. right there. Yeah. They, I knew it. Boy, that's a that's house fire waiting it. to oh, happen. Absolutely. Speaking <laughs> of house fires, I think it's time for our next segment. <laughs> well, we didn't finish talking about Christmas and all the all the goodies. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was my next segment. Oh. Ah, <laughs> right. yes. Yes. Well, go ahead then. Thanks sure. for bailing me out on that nice one. You're yeah. welcome. Okay. <laughs> all seven our, of our stores are going to have pre-Christmas specials. And since today is, uh, what, the first week in December or so, you've got about a week or ten days to get outstanding buys on not only cigars, but humidors, lighters, cutters, and all cigar toys and accessories. So, you know, rush on in, or if you don't know where we're at, and I would hope by now you would, but just in case you don't, our website will tell you everything and then some. And that website is cccigars.com. That's... Double Z Cigars.com. 
Love that wow. mystery. Yeah. 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 He got it right. Wow. He did get it right. So please, That's rush awesome. into your <laughs> local and your closest <laughs> cigar cigar store and load up for Christmas. We are really beating the band this Christmas. Especially in Reading. Come on <laughs> down. <laughs> you can Redding. always see me Go at the Redding. store. Yes. Come now down it's time Redding. for our next installment of Paul in the Factory. Are you are you up to sweeping the floors yet? Or are you still no, out the cigar? That, that, that comes next. <laughs> okay. Um, uh -oh. Actually, whoa. Oh. Thank you. Oh, thank well, you. thank you. This is great service. Oh, that's yeah. much better than Paul in the factory. Uh, sure. Uh -huh. Well, last time we were into quality control, and the uh, the rollers were measuring the ring gauge with a thank steel you. ring, which is actually why it's called ring gauge. Really? Because they're measured with a metal ring. Oh, cool. You know what? Might be quickly to explain what ring Thank gauge you. means. I think that's an excellent idea. Thank you. Ooh. Uh, the rules but you of want me to do it. Oh, yes. you're burning your cup. <laughs> it's a it. The ring gauge of a cigar. When when you hear a cigar is seven yeah, inches yeah. long by fifty. Holy mackerel! Just as an example. Okay. Uh, a fifty ring gauge means it is fifty sixty fourths of an inch. Is that like diameter. 25, 30 seconds? It's kind of like that. Okay, I just want to make sure. So basically a 64 ring gauge cigar is one inch in diameter. And reducing by 60 fourths gives you the number that. Very good. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so that. Now you may so continue. Right. So, the, so the, they measure the ring gauge of the cigar to make sure that they're accurate. And then they do a step which I always found kind of interesting. They take 50 cigars at a time, and they weigh them. And the reason that they weigh them is one of the ways to measure the quality of a cigar is to be sure that it has the right amount of tobacco in it. That means that it's going to draw right. That means that it's not going to be plugged. It means it's not going to be too loose and soft. And it also allows them to make sure that they stuck properly to the blend. So they have a target weight for 50 cigars. And if it's mm. high or low, those cigars aren't right. And once again, the bad boys will stick another name on it and sell it for cheap. And the good guys will take it apart and make a new cigar. So you have quality control. Now you have cigars. But they don't have a band. They don't have a box. <laughs> they don't have a label. They don't have anything. The good stuff. <laughs> yeah. The band. The band. Yeah. band. <laughs> Actually, putting a band on a cigar is a more complicated process than you might think. Mm -hmm. I've done it, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, usually, in the factories, they have a little rack that measures where the band is supposed to be. Because the, the proper method is one band width down from the bottom, mm -hmm. from the top, I'm right. sorry, from the head. See, I told you, I learned something new from you every week. I didn't know that. And, of course, uniformity is very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's n few things uglier to a cigar guy <laughs> than opening a box of cigars and the bands yeah, are all in absolutely. different spots. That's true. Uh, so they put it on this rack and it's got a movable gauge mm -hmm. that tells the, the person that puts the bands on exactly where to put it for that cigar. The band has to be tight. You don't want it sliding uh, up and down the cigar. You don't want the glue pulling wrapper leaf off of the no, cigar. I hate that. And you don't want it pinching the cigar either. So getting the band on just right is an art form of its own. And that's almost always done by women. Why? But we got little hands. They have a better touch. I have big hands. They're nimble. So I don't think I can do Nimble it. sounds good. They're nimble. I know in Cuba, the process for grading and sorting the cigars is done by six men sitting around a table. Mm. And they just basically throw the cigars on there and they, they, they sort them. And it's done so fast, you can barely see it. They reject some, they sort some by color, by length, and it's just an amazing process. Don't women normally do the... No, they I, do the sorting of the leaf. The leaf for the, the cigars. Cigar well. In Cuba, oh, okay. the many times I've seen it done were always men. Really? Yeah, because I saw the transition from mostly men in the rolling galleries to about 50-50. The lectors in every store, every store, every factory I've been in, the lectors, which were the readers of poetry or the news or whatever, uh, while the people were working, were all men as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
But Cuba was one of the earliest countries of the cigar growing and cigar rolling countries that utilized women. They just, in my time of going there, it was still about 50 50. Now so I think it is mostly women. Okay. Interestingly enough, when the cigars are all made, and they might be banded already, they age the cigars, and Art, this is something that you mentioned before, most of the good cigar factories yeah. these days will age their cigars in the factory before they'll even ship them out. Right. Yeah, they, in Cuba, they had these huge cedar cloth, like chest, uh, yeah. upright chest, huge upright chest. And I noticed, the funny part, you bring this up, towards the late 90s, they weren't doing that. They were shipping them out. They weren't laying them down on the cedar chest. Then I knew the quality had gone... Wow, there's yeah. nothing, very little in cigardom more beautiful than seeing one of those aging lockers with all the, all the wheels Gorgeous. stacked on top yeah. of each other. It's, the smell in there is incredible. Uh, it really is. That's wheels? where the term comes from, Do Cuban wheels. you want to explain wheels? Okay. Uh, basically, it's how they, when they age the cigars, they age them 50 at a time, and it looks like a wheel. It's, I guess, seven across the top. I forgot, I forget what the in numbers the middle. are. Seven in the middle. It starts with five, six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we call a wheel. Okay. I thought that was worth knowing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very informative. Glad I knew what it was. That was very informative, Paul, and we we'll look forward to your next installment. I'm not going to be in the factory next time. Oh, well, don't don't give it away. I'm not. Don't give it away. Your cigars right in front of your face. Are you going to be in the, are you going to be in the accounting room? I, no, I never go in the accounting room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm banned from the accounting room. What about the cellophane? All right. Well, what not, about it? He's not done with the cigar. I thought he was. Well, I'm done for today. You're oh, done for today. Well, I was to say one, one time I was in a in a factory and it had to be the, it had to be the worst job in the whole factory is putting the cellophane on. It yes. just looks so mundane. And yeah, it boring. is mundane. Yeah. Believe me, it oh, is yeah. mundane. Anyway, yeah. well, I, I think our, our, we should talk about our next subject. What's your favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. There you well, go. That was quick. Shawshank Redemption. It is one of the best. Hard to top that. The best ever. Best film. Godfather trilogy is in a whole other category. That's true. Yeah. But without a doubt, Shawshank. Anybody else? What's your favorite? Uh, does it have to be cigar related? No. I mean, I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, I don't know. I. I love movies. Oh, you know what my favorite movie is? Too Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, <laughs> Tony Newmar. Who Wong Fu? I can watch that movie six Fu? times in a row, okay? So that's my favorite movie. And they smoke in that movie. Isn't that the movie where Wesley Snipes yes. and, and Patrick, Patrick Swayze, Swayze dress up as women? Patrick Swayze and John Leguizamo. 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 All right, let's move wow. this along now. He's actually the one that only looked like a girl. Paul? Okay. <laughs> I like Predator. Strange as that would wow. sound. Wow. First of all, I like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. Cigar smoker. Um, and he smokes during that movie. Yes, he does. But I just like everything about that movie. I can see it over and over again. It hypnotizes him. <laughs> and there's one scene that just, when, when he's ready to battle the alien, and he climbs up on the cliff and holds up the torch and just bellows at the top of his lungs to call out the alien and yeah. say, I'm ready to fight you. I just think that's fantastic. Is that what you do at one in the morning when yeah. you light your cigar? <laughs> yeah, you well, I did, I did until I woke up my wife and she beat me about the head and said, Rob, I'm anxious to hear yours. Uh, uh, the that demo crew. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, no, uh, mine is Witness for the Prosecution. Great movie. Ooh. Great movie. Ooh. Ooh. 19, that's a classic. 1957. I have two statements before we go to our mystery re reviewer. Uh, 12 Angry Men. Oh, oh, that's my second favorite. Movie. And any movie, any movie with Humphrey Bogart. Oh, okay. Uh, almost, yeah. almost, and I've seen some schlock awesome. ones yeah. that I made too, but didn't matter. With it him matter. in it, it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Mystery reviewer? You stole my thunder. Casablanca. Oh, Casablanca. That is a uh, fantastic movie. Well, that's that's it really a great is. choice. A great I think movie. it's time now for us to review the SLR Generation 2. Okay. And we need to be a little brief on this. Oh. Okay. okay um, it's medium to full. I put it out. Wasn't happy with it. Um, He's tough. Tough. No, you know, it's got to, to me, a cigar has to grab you from the beginning. It doesn't grab you from the beginning, you just lose me. I know you got to get to the middle, but it loses you before you get to the middle. Um, I wish I could say I really liked it, but I don't. So. Scott? I very much enjoy this cigar. I like it, I a, lot, <laughs> I like it a lot better than the original SLRs. Um, uh, very smooth. Um, it's, I, 
maybe it's my palate today, but it's very sweet, and I'm, I'm getting some of those hints of chocolate and caramel from yeah. it. Paul, yeah. do you get the leather and dried fruit? Mm. I kind of got Actually, that in the Actually, the dried fruit, I do. I get I a little bit of currant from that. I got that in the beginning when I lit it. It tasted, tasted like dried fruit. <laughs> I got very little of anything out of this. <laughs> really? Wow. I, I it's got a tiny Yay. bit of spice. Other than that, I find it absent. Thank you, Paul. Oh, wow. we, got a, we got a really divided I panel here this. today. This is great. Rob, yeah, I know what I, you're going to say. I love the cigar. I know, I know oh what you're going to say. I, uh, I smoke the cigar all the time on the golf course. I, it's very relaxing, very smooth. I find it complex. It, it changes for me uh, in, in each stage of, the, of me smoking it. I definitely get the uh, the leather. I get the caramel and the uh, the chocolate in this in this. I don't know why. You, maybe it's your twelfth cigar today. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not up to twelve I, yet. No, I, I think it's a fantastic cigar. Mystery smoker. Well, I definitely get the chocolate and the caramel. It's 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 a it's got a lot of body and it changes as you smoke it. it it's a good cigar. I recommend it. It's a good cigar. Uh, my opinion is it's a it's a great cigar. I get a nice sweet finish off of it. Yeah. It's a de definite medium bodied. Uh, no harassment on the tongue whatsoever. Uh, it's burning half decently. Uh, I think it's modestly priced. It is. I was just going to say yeah, it's yeah, very well priced. It's not, mm -hmm. not $6, badly priced at all. Six to seven dollar range. Yeah, I think it's I think I think it's very good cigar. Yeah. Does anybody else find it a little stingy with the smoke? No, that, no, 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 I don't mean not. that it's hard to draw. I no, just no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm sitting here thinking, I'm looking at art, and it's like, no, I'm getting there's bellows. tons of smoke. Bellows of smoke. There's a lot of smoke in this cigar. I'm not getting a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Maybe that's why I don't I know why. The I'm ratings will be interesting then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, I think it's time to rate it. One to five. Uh oh, here it comes. I can't listen. Okay, I'll say a three. I was going to go a little lower, Ooh. but I'll do a three. Wow. Ooh. A little Four lower than a three. Scott? I mean, I even, five. I even get to the middle. I mean, 4.5, you give it? Yeah. Of course. Uh-oh, here comes another one. Two and a half. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Eight, eight, five. Just That's it. Wow. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I should have went lower. I should have went lower. Wow. I give this a 4.25. Wow. Mystery man? I agree with Rob. 4.25. I mean, I got to tell you, it rings my chimes. I give it a 4 5 oh. Wow. Ooh, there you the go. Highest one? So we have a, a total score of about, uh, let's see, being on the the outline. Paul brings us all the way down. Boy, the you, yeah, you're about 375. Yeah. yeah. Which seems better. about right for the cigar, right? I think you should have rated it higher because it has two bands. I know, oh, right? Yeah. But look at the bands. <laughs> it's not, it's it's not like really Christmas making time. me dance. Look at that. It's wow, it's a great band. But that box is. I love the box. Oh, my God. Yes. That's important. Do we, do we know what we're doing next week? Oh, yes. Yeah. Next week. Uh -oh. Our, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's great. I was very excited about I'm what happy. we're doing next week. I'm happy. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about the Ashen VSG, one of my wow. favorites. Oh, not a bad cigar. Yeah, of yeah. course, we're going to have our segment with Paul. Uh, we're going to talk about what goes into our decision and what cigars we smoke and what cigars we buy. Cool. Yeah. That's uh, great. And then yeah. finally, we're going to talk uh, more about what a sun-grown wrapper is. I yep. can't wait. Sad to say, very sad to say, because I really enjoyed this show. Oh, well, yeah. time. So it's, it's, it's go fast. Don't have to speed through it, but, you know, nice, nice lingering, leisurely goodbye. Bye-bye for now. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Farewell. <laughs> smoke happy, smoke often. Ciao for now. Mystery Wait. man. Ciao for now. That's what I know. See everybody <laughs> next week. Shalom. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you.